Good morning, everybody. Uh, how many of you are in my keynote yesterday? All right, uh, a few of you. Okay, so um, this is kind of an extended version of the keynote. So just for folks uh, who didn't attend my keynote yesterday, I was talking about a simple client and a simple server. They talk to each other in Kubernetes using plain text. And then I showed a really, really hard way to create key inserts and manage mutual TLS uh, by enhancing and take surgery of my simple and server into complex manual mutual TLS client and server. And then lastly, I showed really briefly in the last two minutes of my demo on um, how you could accomplish without surgery of your application by simply labeling a namespace in Kubernetes and enroll your application into the new Istio Cyclist Mesh and immediately gain mutual TLS and observability into your application. So today we're gonna to dive a lot more into Istio. Um, hopefully you guys have some context about mutual TLS and uh, uh, secure applications. Um, so for those of you not in my uh, keynote yesterday, this was uh, my house under construction eight years ago, and I held a lot of workers to build the house. And uh, there are many roles, like engineer, plumber, um, construction manager, and I don't have dedicated uh, workers for my house. These uh, people, they are deployed into many other sites uh, in lower area to help other people to build houses. So I'm really building this on a budget. Um, imagine everybody come to my house to, in order to secure their communication, they drag a sidecar and park it in front of my driveway, right? It's not the prettiest thing. Um, so my name is Lin Sang. I'm the head of open source at Solo.io, a small company uh, based in Boston. And I live in Cary, North Carolina. That's where the house is. Uh, I'm one of the founding member on the Istio project, and uh, I worked at IBM for a very long time. Uh, right before I left IBM, uh, I worked there for 19 years. I went to the corporate uh, p uh, directory and took a screenshot. I contributed to 207 patents for IBM. I wrote two books about Istio. Uh, I'm also a CNCF um, ambassador and a TOC member. Uh, the problem we're going to cover is how do we secure communications among the workers building my house and in the Kubernetes lens is the applications trying to communicate to each other within your Kubernetes cluster or it could be across Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to ask you guys how many of you uh, actually know what service mesh is? All right, awesome. How many of you are actually using a service mesh in production today? And are you guys using Istio? Yeah, all of you? Awesome, okay. I won't ask other questions regarding other service mesh because there's uh, no need. Okay, so for, for those of you who are not familiar with what service mesh is, essentially it's a programmable framework to allow your application to connect, secure, and observe microservices. So you don't have to uh, make code change to your application to do that. Uh, from CNCF landscape, well, how many of you actually hate the CNCF landscape? It's too big or oh, you guys love it? No? Yes? It was great five years ago. It was great five years ago? All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so um, there are two service mesh uh, projects that CNCF graduated. I want to highlight Istio and LinkedIn, LinkedIn on the landscape. And out of all the mesh projects, um, all the projects are using Envoy as the proxy except the LinkedIn. In Istio, we have many happy Saika users. Uh, so I'm going to ask a couple of you who said you're Istio user. Are you guys pretty happy with Saikas? Yes, raise up your hand if you're happy. Okay, maybe nobody are happy. Okay, we do have some users are very happy with uh, sidecars and these are a couple of quotes uh, from them. Um, I do want to highlight some challenges with sidecar today. The first challenge is transparency, right? It requires injection of the sidecar, right? Remember in, uh, 
in the sidecar environment, you have to kind of restart the application part to pick up the sidecar. That's one thing people really love the demo I had yesterday because I didn't have to touch the application part at all. It remains running as I transition the application into ambient. And uh, we find a lot of our users come to us when they shut down or start up their parts uh, of their application and it has conflict with uh, the sidecars and sometimes cause their application not functioning, which is a huge problem. And uh, whenever there is an Envoy CVE out there, uh, you have to restart your application part to pick up the new Envoy CVE uh, as part of the operation complexity. And not everything we support in the sidecar land because, uh, for example, Kubernetes jobs, the jobs might be ending while your sidecar remains running. So that's not a very great scenario. Uh, there's also incremental adoption challenging with the sidecar. Uh, you uh, may just want to adopt uh, the mesh just for mutual TLS and uh, you ask your carry the Intel Envoy based sidecar with you, right? Which supports layer seven, all the complex uh, layer seven functionality come with Envoy, which by the way is most of Envoy CVE come from. Uh, that's, um, you don't have a choice even though you just want mutual TLS uh, for your application. So it's all or nothing injection of the sidecars. Um, there are other challenges with sidecar, primarily related to resources. I've seen people complain on Twitter. Um, the sidecars are using half of their service mesh infrastructure resources, which is not very pretty. And we had a user always uh, um, question us, you know, what is the best uh, way to config the sidecar resources? Is the requirement too excessive uh, for their needs? Can you remove the default resource limits for our sidecar uh, Istio proxy? Um, so all these challenging lead us to design ambient uh, in the Istio community. So this is almost two years ago. We actually launched ambient two years ago. It's a new uh, way to run Istio without sidecars. Um, Matt Klein, who knows who uh, Matt Klein is? Nobody? Okay, uh, so Matt is the founder of Envoy and uh, he's uh, very recognized in the CNCF community because his uh, awesome work with Envoy proxy, right? If you guys use Lyft um, to do your write. Um, so Matt was uh, one of the key engineer at Lyft and uh, created Envoy for Lyft to use. And he kind of endorsed the architecture of Sidecar has been very unfortunate uh, implementation detail and the user would prefer not to expose that uh, to them. So in a nutshell, when we introduce ambient in the community, there are three things uh, we're focusing on. The first one, the most important one is simplify operation, right? We want to make sure that transition to the mesh in and out experience is super transparent to our user. They don't have to restart their application part. And the second one, which is also the biggest, uh, the other biggest pain point we heard about sidecar is the cost, right? Uh, instead of using like half of your infrastructure resources to run service mesh for sidecars, uh, we want to dramatically bring that cost down. And the third thing is uh, improve performance. So let me walk you through uh, ambient architecture really quickly. Um, how many of you know what a Kubernetes daemon set is? Everybody I'd expect, right? You run, if you ever run Kubernetes, you probably have run a daemon set, right? So in ambient, uh, we kind of decided to divide that proxy, uh, which was sidecar, into two layers. So one layer dedicated to layer four processing, um, which handles mutual TLS and simple authorization policy enforcement and the, the second layer handles layer seven processing. So um, the secure overlay layer is provided by a daemon set uh, that we provide in Istio called Zero Trust Tunnel, which you see in orange here. Um, so basically um, all the traffic coming from your application part is going to, uh, when they're going out or when any traffic coming in, it's going to be captured by the Zero Trust Tunnel, uh, that daemon set we just talked about, and that daemon set is going to provide uh, 
keys and certificate and mints everything for the application on the node. And it's going to upgrade the connection to mutual TLS through HTTP connect uh, to the destination site. Um, so this is really, really powerful to allow you to run um, proxy per node on layer four uh, level. Um, how many of you know what gateway is? Okay, I'd expect more of you, don't be shy, right? <laughs> so gateway is typically used uh, to config uh, traffic from outside of your cluster coming into your cluster, right? So um, what we decided is we're not gonna let you guys run sidecar, right? But we still need layer seven policy enforcement. And the way the, to achieve that is through a gateway into um, your namespace or into whichever scope you feel comfortable, which might be a service account. So we call that a waypoint proxy, which is powered by Envoy proxy. Um, so the idea is when the traffic comes in uh, to a particular destination, if the destination has a waypoint proxy who serves as a gateway into the destination, um, the waypoint proxy will enforce any layer seven policy and make sure uh, that's enforced uh, or delined uh, and before the traffic is forward to the destination. destination. So we talk about slicing the layers. Uh, so just to quickly recap, uh, on the secure overlay layer, which is layer four, you can do really basic uh, uh, mutual TLS, you can do TCP layer uh, metric logging, you can do TCP layer routing. Uh, on the layer seven processing layer, which is all the fancy advanced configuration, function of service mesh, traffic management, uh, circuit breaking, no balance of, uh, fault injection, retry, timeout, and uh, reach authorization policy and HTTP level metrics. Since we're in a security conference, we're gonna focus a lot more on reach authorization policies. So why there's two layer architecture? You might be wondering, right? If we can do one, why would you do two? You know, increase the complexity. Um, the key thing is Envoy is not designed to serve as a multi-tenancy proxy. Um, so if you run Envoy in a multi-tenancy proxy for layer, particularly for layer seven, then one of your tenant could potentially bring down all the other tenant on that particular node. Um, and also it's hard to calculate cost for different tenancy when you share layer seven proxy because those layer seven um, processing sometimes takes a lot of CPU and memory. And Matt Klein, uh, who was the founder of Envoy, uh, did come in and weigh in on the Twitter thread we had, and uh, he, he agreed that general sentiment is uh, adding multi-tenancy into Envoy is not worth, um, worth the complexity. So let me walk you through the user experience before we jump into the demo. Uh, to include your application into Ambient, uh, you can just uh, label the namespace. Uh, very, very simple. Um, a lot of application requirements that comes with sidecar has been eliminated with Ambient because of the fact you no longer run the sidecar along with your application pod. So like the, the sidecar was using application UUID 1337, so that's gone. A lot of ports used by the proxy, that's gone. You know, server sent first protocol, that requirement is gone. So uh, a lot more powerful, because we know our user, a lot of time they come to service mesh using Istio, we were frustrated because uh, um, their application wasn't compatible with the sidecar. The other thing really interesting I want to show is we've done a lot of cost study. Remember I said the second important thing for us to create an ambient in the community was the cost. Um, so uh, we did a study with uh, four different iteration uh, with uh, hundreds of services in GKE using Google Cloud pricing calculator. So the baseline means everything runs outside of the mesh. Um, and the sidecar means uh, everything, all the application runs with the sidecar, and the sidecar list means uh, just running the ambient with the layer four proxy uh, 
the demons that we talk about called Zeo Trust Tunnel. And then the Ambient Plus uh, Waypoint Proxy is the one that uh, also have uh, the Layer 7 processing. So as you can tell, uh, in this scenario, Ambient didn't actually increase the cost uh, when you add your application to Ambient. And when you're running uh, Ambient Plus on Layer 7 processing, it uh, slightly increased the cost, but not as much as Sica. So this is really promising because we know not everybody needs Layer 7 processing, right? So it gives you the flexibility to decide based on your tenant uh, namespace or service account scope whether you want to carry the cost of name, uh, the Waypoint Proxy. We also have one of our first users running Ambient in production, because uh, Ambient was just reached beta uh, in May this year. And uh, he find out Ambient uh, significantly simplified uh, management uh, of his application and also reduce the size of their Kubernetes cluster node by 20%. Note this is not the infrastructure, service mesh infrastructure cost by 20%. This is the entire Kubernetes uh, node cluster which he runs the, his application, some other uh, stuff on the cluster too, not just the service mesh. All right, uh, let's review security briefly for those folks who are interested in is Ambient more secure than Saika? Uh, we believe the answer is yes. Um, the reason is if you only need a mutual TLS and simple layer for processing, the zero trust tunnel we talk about on the node proxy is going to be so much simpler than Envoy, so it would not be exposed to any of the layer seven processing uh, CVEs. So you'll be uh, freed uh, from any attacking related to layer seven processing. Um, so that's a key thing. Uh, the other thing is we're not doing any multi-tenancy layer seven processing. So each tenant has its own layer seven processing. So uh, if your application has a vulnerability, it would only attack, um, impact the associated waypoint proxy. It doesn't necessarily impact the other applications out there. Um, the state of MBN, I think I kind of touched it. Uh, we, it reaches beta in May, which is when we start recommending you guys try it in production, give us feedback, and definitely in your test environment, so we're hoping to reach GA later this year. Um, one thing I want to capture really quickly in case you are wondering, what about CNIs? Does Ambient work with any other CNIs? Uh, yes, the way we design Ambient is uh, the Ambient uh, is compatible with all the different CNI. We've tested on Cilium, Calico, and uh, uh, EKS, Azure, and certainly uh, Google Cloud. Uh, with that, we're going to jump into the demo. So in the demo, we're going to use um, uh, we're going to use K3S stand up the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we already have Istio deployed, and we're going to use uh, Flannel as our CNI, which comes by default with K3S. Um, and then let's jump in. Um, all right, so the first thing I want to show you is um, what's on my cluster, right? So I have a three node cluster, and I already got Istio installed. Um, so you can see these are the demons that I talk about. The zero trust tunnel is deployed onto each of the node. Uh, the Istio CNI node is the node that's responsible. It's also a daemon uh, set. It's responsible to do um, network traffic redirection for all the traffic coming in and out of the pod to the co-located co zero trust tunnel. So the zero trust tunnel can make sure upgrade that connection to mutual TLS. Um, all right, and we have a Istio D, which is the control plane that automatically program the configuration for zero trust tunnel, the sidecars for folks that are familiar with sidecar if you run sidecar, or the waypoint proxy. All right, uh, let's um, walk through what we're going to do quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy uh, the Curl client, uh, which I think you guys are relative familiar, right? It's basically using uh, the Curl images and provide a utility for us to serve as a client. 
And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy the HTTP theme.yaml. By the way, I may need your guys' help because this is a live demo. I don't want to script the demo because it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit more boring. So I could make typos. Uh, so please help me if I made any mistakes. Uh, you guys, uh, I need to leverage your brain power here. Um, all right, so the HTTP Bing uh, is, uh, it's basically the HTTP Bing application where you can call it to get headers, get a teapot. Um, so how many of you actually use HTTP Bing before? All right, a few of you. How many of you used the Cur uh, image before? All right, so you guys know what it is, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and deploy and um, so we're going to deploy the HTTP Bing. We're going to also deploy uh, the Cur client. Um, I don't have a fast uh, network connection today, so hopefully they reach running pretty fast. Oh, it looks pretty good. I think the conference Wi-Fi are very good this week. All right, so we got our application running, and uh, we're going to also do a little bit um, different. So we're going to create a hacker namespace, and uh, it's the namespace, so we're going to put a client there, and we're trying to do a little bit of things uh, who are not supposed to do. Um, so, all right. Oh, okay, so my bad. This is uh, where I need you guys to help. Uh, uh, so we're going to deploy into the hacker namespace because the other namespace already have the code client. All right, so we should be able to see them come up running. Yes, they did. And then we're going to um, run the kubectl command, just making sure um, everything can be executed. So we're going to do, um, okay, we're going to do a simple one here. Let me cut. Um, let me. So we're going to do access from the Curl client, and we're going to access the HTTP Bing through the headers. So for those of you who are familiar with HTTP Bing, uh, you know this, uh, what this, uh, right? So it provides a teapot when you call status 418, and uh, it, it provides the headers um, print out to you when you call headers. So this all works, right? And I can also do this in the hacker namespace if I'm a hacker using the Curl client. So, um, okay, I'm making another typo. Let me make sure. Uh, all right, thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so you can see everything works, right? This is not zero trust. Uh, this is uh, like, okay, if I have no security, everything works. Um, this is not what we wanted to do though. So um, so the first thing, uh, the next thing after our app deploy, we're going to uh, enable, so you guys help me out. How do I name, uh, label namespace and put my pod into ambient? Uh, Istio.io slash uh, data plane mode equals ambient, right? You all know how to label a namespace, right? So uh, by running a simple label namespace, okay, I made another error, okay, default, I forgot my namespace. All right, um, so let's fix that. All right, so we got our namespace label. So what does that mean? That means um, the default is in ambient, but the hacker are not in ambient. So the other thing we're going to do is we're going to say um, in everything uh, in the mesh, I'm going to only allow mutual TLS to come in, right? So, um, so we're going to take this deploy in the Istio system, which is like the admin namespace for Istio. So once, once it's deployed there, it's going to be effective to every single namespace for all the parts in the mesh. Okay, so we got this applied. So what do you think it's going to happen if I try to reach from the Cur client uh, from the hacker namespace? So let's do that. Um, all right, so right now we're trying to call 418 uh, on HTTP, right? Remember it works before, now it doesn't work. Um, the reason is um, the HTTP said, I only accept a mutual TLS traffic. And because of the uh, Cur client in the hacker namespace doesn't speak mutual TLS, doesn't have the key and certs, um, doesn't have the key and search trusted from the root, so it doesn't know how to access the HTTP being. Um, so what if um, the hacker got smarter? So uh, what we are going to do is um, label the hacker namespace to be part of the ambient. 
Um, so this hopefully should give hacker access. I mean, the hacker can do this in one way is, you know, figure out how to label, uh, get permission to label the namespace with ambient. The other thing the hacker could do is kind of grab, somehow generate the key and search, right? And then using the key and search uh, that can be trusted by HTTP to establish the connection. So uh, with this label, uh, do you think it would work? Yes? How many of you think it would work? Yes? Yes. All right, there you go, right? The, the reason it works now is because the hacker namespace is also in the mesh. So it knows um, it's automatically programmed with the key and search from Istio, the co-located at Zero Trust Tunnel, uh, running together with the Curl client in the hacker namespace, knows how to program it and use that to uh, establish connection with HTTPS connect. All right, so this is not great, right? If hacker figure out how to access this easily, we wouldn't serve our job. So the next thing we'll, uh, we want to do is we want to apply a zero trust um, policy to the mesh. So we're gonna apply a deny all policy. So what does uh, deny all mean, right? It's like anybody talk to anybody, like you don't trust your mom. When your mom asks you money, right? You want to make a phone call to your mom. Are you really trying to request this money from me, right? So that's what deny all is. You don't trust anybody by default. Um, and additionally, we're gonna add an authorization policy uh, to allow um, anybody can go through Istio Ingress Gateway um, on any method. So this is not actually used in the demo because um, we're mostly talking about inter-service communication here. But if you do use, uh, expose your services to the outside world through Istio Ingress Gateway, this will be very useful. So uh, we're gonna apply the deny all and um, let's do that. So Q apply. All right, so we got this applied. Let's uh, making sure um, it's, it's in the Istio system. So that means it's applied to the entire mesh. So now there's a problem. So what do you think is going to happen if I'm actually calling this from my default namespace? So I'm going to remove the hacker. Do you think it's going to work? Yes? No? Yeah. You got it. It's not going to work. The reason is uh, we don't trust anybody, right? Not including the curl client in the own namespace. So in order for us to enable additional access, you only grant permission based on zero trust principle is you only grant permission to uh, access to whoever you believe needs it. So in this case, we're going to apply a simple authorization policy to say, allow cook client from the default namespace, uh, which by the way is identified by the principal, the speaker ID, um, to access HTTP Bing. So let's go ahead and deploy this. So we're going to deploy, uh, allow, okay, probably have a typo, cur to HTTP Bing layer four. Um, all right, so we got our security policy deployed. Let's go ahead and retry this command. Yay, it works. And now let's try headers. I do expect that to work too, right? Because there's nothing says it, it shouldn't be working. All right, so we got kind of a layer four policy enforcement kind of working now. Um, but what if we want to do something fancy, right? You want to do a layer seven access policy. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is actually deploy the layer seven access uh, authorization policy. And we want to be a little bit fancy here. So we're going to target the authorization policy to HTTP Bing. By the way, this is using uh, the Kubernetes Gateway um, uh, API uh, recommendation to bind a service to a policy using target ref. And uh, we're gonna say we only allow traffic if it's from the curl client in the default namespace. And uh, we only allow get method to the slash headers. Remember we showed uh, the teapot, which is not running slash headers. And we also said, right, we only allow, you can talk to slash headers when you have these, uh, uh, these, uh, these headers uh, in there. So you have to have X test me approved. So let's uh, go ahead, deploy this. 
Okay, I'm going to test you guys very quickly. Um, so get ready for that. Um, so cur uh, two HTTP bin layer seven. All right, so we got this deployed. And uh, now if I'm calling the headers, do you think it's going to work? No? Yes? Who think it's going to work? Raise your hand. Okay, good job. It works. The reason is there's no policy enforcement yet. Remember we talked about it? Who knows the answer? It might be, except Ariana. So the reason it works is, remember we talked about layer seven policy enforcement? It needs the waypoint proxy. So right now I don't have the policy uh, enforcement yet. So you have to tell me as a user whether you want to uh, deploy a waypoint proxy. So let's review the waypoint proxy really quickly configuration. So the waypoint proxy is a Kubernetes Gateway API. How many of you know what Kubernetes Gateway API is? Yeah, it's basically the ingress, Kubernetes ingress v2. So how many of you know what Kubernetes uh, ingress is? Yes, I expect everybody <laughs> if you ever use Kubernetes cluster. So good job, thank you. Um, so the gateway API is the new, uh, get, uh, the new ingress API for Kubernetes. It's uh, actually just uh, launched GA uh, recently. So in order to deploy a waypoint pro uh, a proxy, which is powered by Envoy, you basically deploy it uh, with a gateway class name and you said it's listening on the, uh, the port of 15008, which is the port uh, we upgrade the connection to HTTPS connect using mutual PLS. Um, and uh, we're deploying um, the waypoint for services. Okay, so let me go ahead and deploy this um, waypoint. So the moment I type this, you should be able to see uh, the waypoint proxy comes up and it's an Envoy proxy, so it's going to, oh, it's ready. I was just going to say, it's going to take a little while to download Envoy. Okay, it's ready. So the last thing we want to do is to indicate uh, our namespace is going to use this waypoint. Waypoint equals. So to do that is we're going to label the namespace default to say, I want to use the waypoint proxy. The reason we ask you to do this actual command is you might have multiple waypoint in the namespace and the, it gives you the opportunity to choose uh, which waypoint you want to use as the default for your namespace. All right, so now what do you guys think? Is this going to work? How many of you think it's going to work? Uh, Kirk Klein can call headers. Okay, nobody thinks it's going to work. Good job, you guys. Actually, so let's verify why, how, why is this not working, right? So if you look at the waypoint log, it's getting a 403 RBAC access denied because the waypoint was able to enforce the policy um, based on our authorization policy. If you remember our authorization policy said, you can only call header if you have this X test meet, right? So let's see if we can get that working. Let's go back to our terminal and uh, let's see if we can get this header working. And uh, X, I'm gonna need you guys help if I type anything wrong. I think it's like this. Um, do you think it might work? Does that look good? Yes? All right, let's try it. Yeah, it works. All right, what about the teapot? Do you think a teapot would work? No? How many of you think it's not gonna work? All right, you guys are great. So 418, remember that's a command, right? Yes, and let's go back to, um, to here. All right, this is actually just coming into uh, another um, RBAC uh, 413. Actually, let me make, make sure. Uh, yeah, that's the other. Remember we had a two, uh, 200, we have a 403 which is the teapot. So you can see the waypoint proxy, which by the way runs outside of your pod, is successfully enforced the layer seven authorization policy for you. So um, just recap here, you know, we were able to uh, through uh, config mutual TLS uh, by adding um, the ambient label, we were able to enable mutual TLS for our pod without any restart of the pod. Uh, by adding a simple authorization policy, uh, we were able to block uh, the Kirk client in the hacker namespace. And then by adding an advanced authorization policy, uh, very rich, 
along with the Waypoint Proxy to enforce the Layer 7 uh, authorization policy, we were able to block uh, the call from, even from our own CURT client, to call the TPOD um, status and also call headers unless it's using an uh, X um, test me uh, header in there. So, um, anyone have any questions regarding the demo? Yes? Well, that's a really, really great question. Uh, so that's actually what we are working on right now in the community. Uh, we do believe uh, with time and effort, probably later this year, we'll be able to, we're going to accomplish this very similar to the sidecar, right? So if you are familiar with Istio sidecar, we do allow you to have uh, a common root of trust among two cluster. So basically each of your cluster is going to plug in the intermediate key and cert and use that to distribute and create uh, like the leaf uh, roots, uh, leaf uh, public uh, certificate and key um, so that you can still establish like a single root of trust. So in this case, uh, it would be up to the zero trust tunnel to, to create uh, the key and search and make sure they are still a single root of trust, uh, even across multiple cluster. Yeah, great question. Um, all right, uh, so um, let me see if I have any slides. I think I'm actually out of time. So the only thing I want to say for folks who are using Sidecars, is Sidecar will continue to be here to stay. Um, it can be useful for certain scenarios, like multi-cluster, for instance, before we added multi-cluster to ambient or uh, Sidecar specific configuration, you require source site specific route configuration. Um, just to summarize the talk, uh, you know, Cyclist Istio is the new data play mode uh, we have in Istio, which I believe is the only uh, service mesh that supports it with the right architecture. And the Zero Trust Tunnel and Waypoint are designed uh, to scale with very minimum configuration. Uh, you deploy exactly what you need. Um, and uh, Ambient is designed to simplify your experience uh, access policies. And I showed some of you, this is my house uh, after it's been built. Imagine how nice this is uh, without the side cars. And here are additional resources if you're interested. Uh, you know, we would love to have you guys try Ambient. I wrote a book about Ambient, so you can scan that QR code and access the book. Um, we would love you guys to engage with us in the Istio community. There's an Ambient channel. Uh, we also have uh, different blogs on Istio, and my company also provide a free ambient tutorial environment if you guys want to try ambient outside of your laptop or your cloud, but certainly it should work also on your laptop, just like mine. Um, all right, uh, thank you so much for joining. I'll be here if you guys have any questions. I really appreciate you guys attending. Thanks.